Now, before we get into everything, um, Anthony, yeah, didn't go your way, brother. Uh, yeah, there's no, a lot of people you drug me out know. of my you drug me out of my hole. I've been hiding under a bridge like a troll. <laughs> Have you really? Yeah, yeah, I haven't talked to anybody. anybody. No podcast, no interviews. You just like just stayed at home. Mike, I'm not even answering text messages. I haven't even I haven't even spoken to my man. Oh, I know you didn't answer mine, you prick. <laughs> no, I, I, it's it is nothing. If for anybody that's listening, if you've texted me or reached out and I haven't responded, it's not it's not you. It's me. I'm just in a in a weird place, you know. Just and and sometimes you just have to unplug, you know. And and I just mm. I really threw myself into just being with my family and and you know sometimes you have to sit back and. I don't know. You got to reevaluate and just kind of see where you are. What do you want? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know, because there was, yeah, it was, I don't know. It was a pretty dark place there for a while. Well, it's understandable because obviously you put up a lot of time, effort. You put a lot into not only preparing for a fight, but as fighters, we make it our identity. It's kind mm -hmm. of defines who we are to a certain degree. I mean, of course, family, wife, children that, that 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 comes first outside of that we're fighters you know and that becomes who you are and it almost like your success in life and how you are viewed out by these i don't know the, the fans that are very hot and cold you know they, they, they're very fickle you know right. what i mean they're on the bandwagon then they're off the bandwagon and it affects you and even though we're supposed to be these big tough guys of course it fucking affects us you know and you fail mm -hmm. miserably and the reality is is that it's just a sporting event and people fail right. all the time. But you, me, the person in the octagon, or to use that quote, the man in the arena, they're the ones that feel it the most. And they're the ones that have to go and sit there and be left with their own emotions. So uh, I don't know. Do, do, do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I guess I'll start with just the fight and then we'll go into the after. I knew that I was in an uphill battle. I knew that. I knew the position that I put myself in was not it was not going to benefit me. I knew that I I, I kind of put myself behind the gun and I was fine with that. I'm told I knew exactly what I was getting myself into and I knew what I was up against. Um I had a uh, I had a qu I had quite a bit of weight to cut, you know. That was the the bigger issue, which is initially they wanted me to fight that weekend that he was initially supposed to, but I couldn't make the weight in time. Mm. So they bumped it back a week and uh, they gave me a little more time. Now, don't get me wrong. All, all weight cuts are hard, but uh, this one wasn't, I, I I don't want to say it was significantly harder than the other ones because it was about the same, but it was a significantly more amount of weight. Like it was a lot more weight. So uh, I was like 236 when they called uh, and I had about 10 days to get to 205, which was whatever, you know, I did the right way. We got on weight, whatever. And then you know, we go into the fight and I, I just, even in camp and I'll just pull the curtain back. Not that I had a long camp, but I went to Denver um, and Chris Curtis was there. And so I couldn't have asked for a better training partner uh, other than, than Chris Curtis leading into that fight. He was a short, stocky Southpaw um, that's got power in his hands. It, it was as close as you were going to get on short notice. So, um, and in camp, I just wasn't seeing the left hand. I wasn't seeing the straight left. I, I don't know that it, it's been a while since I've been in front of like a real high level uh, Southpaw. There, to be honest, there's not that many of them out there. So especially with that style, with that body type. So even then I wasn't seeing it. And, it, and I don't know if that's, I just haven't seen it in a while or, or if it's me, I don't know. But I think it's probably just a time thing. I think over a, the entirety of a training camp over five, six, seven weeks, seeing it every single day, I think, I, I think I'd figure it out. But I wasn't seeing it. So we had to change the game plan in 10 days. So we went from having no fight to a game plan to three days into a 10 day preparation to have, I have to change it because I'm not seeing it. I was getting fucking tattooed with it in, in practice. So we had to change it and, and it, and it was working. And then I went into the fight and he was just way faster than I had anticipated. I knew he was going to be fast, but he was, it, it was shocking how fast he is, how he goes from zero to a hundred so fast. Um, so I struggled with the speed, uh, in the fight and I, I didn't really have any other options. I wasn't seeing the left hand. He was faster than I was. Um, and he was faster than I was prepared for. Some of that is I wasn't in fight shape. So I wasn't 
I wasn't like I was seeing things, but my body just wasn't reacting fast enough because I haven't been in a camp. So, um, and there's no excuse. That's my, that's my fault. I put myself in that position. I knew that was a possibility. So, um, but I just, I couldn't react to it fast enough. So, um, I just had to walk him down and try to get him into a, a phone booth and he had a great game plan. He, he changed a lot of things that, uh, he would typically do in a fight. He didn't overextend. He didn't let me draw him into a kind of a brawling style. He, he was super methodical and technical. He, I, I didn't have the cardio to push the wrestling as hard as I really wanted to and, and, and try to level the playing field there a little bit because, the last thing you want to do is be ga- – you don't want to be in front of Khalil Roundtree anyways, but the last place you want to be is in front of him tired. And so I had to conserve some energy, so I wasn't allowed, I wasn't able to do a lot of stuff that I wanted to do, um, at least at that pace. And, you know, he 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 didn't go to – he went to the uppercut like one time early in the fight, and he didn't go back to it until the third round. So I was getting away with kind of just shelling up and keeping my head tight and kind of like dealing with the r- stuff that was coming round. And I was kind of jamming up his straight punches. So I was taking them, but they weren't like real hard because he wasn't, I wasn't at the end of them. So I was kind of jamming his punches halfway. Um, but he, he made him, him and his coaches made a great adjustment. He went uppercut, popped my head up and then came over the top. Um, you know, and, and that was it. You know, I, I, I didn't contest the stop, obviously. Um, I was awake and aware the whole time, but, uh, you know, there's a, a brain to body disconnect where, I'm aware of what's happening, but I can't control what's going on on the bottom half. Um, you know, so I, I've had a lot of memes and videos made about me with, uh, you know, the dancing and, and to be fair, like the salsa dancing one is really funny. Um, I, I haven't seen know, them. I've been, I've been out yeah. of the loop. So I'll do my research on the Anthony Smith yeah, memes. And I mean, you you got to give credit sometimes because they get creative. It was, there was a couple of them that are funny, but um, Khalil couldn't have been more respectful. He couldn't have been a nicer guy. He couldn't have uh, even saying, you know, he thinks that that fight maybe goes different. Um, had I had a full camp and I thought he was really, he could have fucking hammered me with that last, with that last shot. Um, you know, when I was trying to figure out which way was up and which way was down, um, by the time I looked up, the referee was already stepping in. Uh, he could have really put, put a good one on me and and he didn't. And, And I think that that just goes to show the type of person that he is. I think it shows that, you know, even, you know, through all of this, I, I think I earned his respect enough for him to to show a little bit of restraint there. Um, to be honest, I don't know that I would have done the same for him. Um, and that's not that I don't respect him. It's just that's more my instincts is to follow people mm-hmm. down. Um, I think he has so much power. He knows if he lands a shot like that, he probably doesn't need to. Um, <clears throat> but I think that was really cool of him. And I and I appreciate that. Um and maybe going forward, you know, if I end up in that same situation, maybe I'll take a page out of Khalil's book and, and maybe show that same restraint. I hope that that's the case. But and then afterwards, man, it was uh, it was tough, bro. It was really tough. Like a loss is one thing, but one like that is is really tough to take. Unfortunately, you've been there. So like you get it. Um, it's embarrassing. And, and you, you know, you just I don't know, just in a dark place. And, and then you start asking yourself questions like do I, do I still belong here? Like, you know, in all these questions you ask yourself are, are rational, you know, like Khalil is a top 10 dude, whether it doesn't matter what his number in front of his name is skill wise. And the, the, the talent that he has and that he possesses is, is top five or top 10 level in the world. So, you know, then you ask yourself like, fuck, what am I doing here? Like, I, I just, I don't want to be the guy that has people, telling you that you need to leave you know like i'd like to go out on my own terms and and i don't want to be forced out and you know you just start you, you, those questions and those doubts come in like do i belong here am I, wh- why am i still doing this like do i it, am i doing this because i it's all i know because i don't need the money and i don't need I, I i don't need to take unnecessary damage i don't need to get knocked out for no reason like i i of course, all the like the money is nice and the paychecks are cool and and you know the 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 I don't know, the adrenaline rush you get from being in there is awesome. But like, am I just doing this because I don't know anything else? Like, is this all I know? It's all I've done my whole adult life. So you have to like, I just kind of remove myself from everything and 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 just cut away from all the outside input and 
just tried to figure out like what do i really want what are, like why am i still doing this like do i still want to fight because i like fighting or is it just because it's familiar um and i think i came to the conclusion that i i i still like fighting and i still want to do there's some there's some things that need to change though um not just in my game and my style and i think that you know i i had a conversation with glover that i think really helped a lot um just as we age you have to change some things it's not that you have to quit fighting it's not that you have to you know like oh i'm not as good here i'm not you know this is i've i've not progressed here but there's some things that you're already good at that you can continue to really shape your game around and just change it a little bit um i also think that uh I need to, maybe I need to stop being so focused on like the end goal so much. It's just like, I just want to fight for the title. I want to fight for that. Maybe I just need to just take one at a time and just face whatever challenges in front of me and stop. Not that I'm looking past people or that I'm looking too far ahead, but I, it, it like everything, everything I have wrapped into this fighting thing is about the title. And maybe when I stop being so concerned about the title, maybe I can fully focus on what's in front of me because it's always about the repercussions of that loss or the repercussions of that win. The first thing I thought about when I walked out of the octagon was like, now how long is it going to take me to get to a title? And it wasn't even about the fight. It wasn't even about Khalil. It wasn't about what had just happened. It was about, I was still so focused on like, what does that do to my title hunt now? Like maybe I just need to put that away and stop fucking worrying about it so much and just, take one at a time and just enjoy the right now and just live where I am and just be where my feet are instead of just trying to always be somewhere else. Um, but I still, I still want to fight. I'm not going anywhere. I, I, that's, you know, that's probably the worst loss I've ever taken, but uh, I feel like I was, if it, if I was in, if I had more time or I was in better shape or I had a whole training camp or, you know, a lot of things are different. I think that whole thing looks different. I don't think, I aged overnight. I think I just put myself in a tough spot and it didn't, you know, it's kind of like football, you know, like teams go for it on fourth down and when they get it, they look like geniuses, but when they don't convert it, you look stupid and everyone's going to run you over, you know, rake you over the coals about it. Um, so I think it's one of those times where like, I look dumb as shit now, but had I won, I would have looked like a genius. So, uh, you know, and, and I don't know, man, you, I, I think, and I'm rambling now, but I think some of this gave me a better perspective on kind of like where we are in the world. Like the absolute hate and vitriol that I got after that fight, like really, and, and again, like I've, I've learned to deal with it. But that's just, just that, trolls. I, I, well, I've been sure. trying to not interrupt. There's like first show 2024, Bisbee, don't interrupt Anthony's <laughs> speech. Bad. I've been trying. Oh, rambling, I've been trying. No, no, listen. Well, I'm, the, I'm only interrupting to say it, but they're just trolls. People that send those messages, they don't matter. Any kind of half-decent human being does not message a fighter that's a decent person that's trying to provide for their family and revel in them losing and being defeated and failing in their mission. you got to be a certain level of piece of shit to do oh, that sure. so anyone that does that just 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 forget about that well and, and i've done a pretty good job like on the last couple of years of just dealing with it better i just write it off and blow it off but this one was especially you know like it was especially a lot of hate which is you know whatever like that's the position we put ourselves in but i i it almost like helped it almost made me feel better like at, at the end of the day all these people who are talking shit, like if you're one of these people that are online and you're, you're, you, you, you enjoy running to my social media and, and trashing me and whatever, like, don't forget who I am and who you are. Like you're, nobody knows who you are. I pulled myself out of the absolute fucking gutter with absolutely nothing. No high school diploma, uh, criminal record, no friends, no one supporting me. I pulled myself out of, from fucking nothing. To the worldwide leader of sport. I sit up on ESPN in a fucking suit with no high school diploma talking about fighting. Like it almost made me feel better that like I have done so well with so little that people that are, are that level of a piece of shit are mad about it. And so like, I've almost embraced it and I almost kind of like enjoy it. Like kind of just keep bringing it on because I, I've worked so hard to get to where I am and sacrifice so much. 
And if that means I go out and I get knocked out in front of the whole world, like, so what? Like, it is what it is. Like, I still tried. I still had the balls to step out there with a guy as dangerous as him on short notice and didn't fight like a pussy. A lot of these people would have went in there and just tried to pick at him and run away and, and avoid him. Like, that's not who I am. I'm going to step into the fire every single time. And we're going to see what happens. And it doesn't always work out. And that's just life. And if anybody can take anything from, from me or my career, that's what you're going to get out of me every single time. And that's how I attack life. I'm going to step into the fire every time. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But over the entirety of my life, I've continued to move forward and upwards. And I've always come back better from a loss. And it just it is what it is, man. And I got to let it go and have a short memory. Well, I mean, you said a lot there, so I'm just trying to unpack a lot of what you said. Um, and first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you still want to fight. Oh, you know, yeah. But if you want to fight, you've got to be a little bit more meticulous about it, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, you I know, agree. There's no more short I'll, notice I'll, fights, that's for sure. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll be honest. I said it when we watched the fight on the live, and I didn't want to go into it because it's like I felt like I was betraying you or whatever. I hated it. I was on a walk. I think it was Thanksgiving Day mm -hmm. when I got the message and I found out you were fighting. I hated it. I fucking hated it. I was, I, I didn't understand it because, and I think, I think I'm listening. You, you're a fighter 100% and you've got balls of steel. You know what I mean? And you're like, fuck it, let's go. I can do this. And I think with all this, the trend lately of people stepping up on short notice, you know, Tom Aspinall just going out there and doing it. Volkanovski stepping up, all right, he lost. But it's, it's been like a kind of a thing, hasn't it? People stepping up on short notice. I think maybe there's people, let's take short notice fights. Mm -hmm. I, I, you only do that when there's really something worth risking it for. Like I did it, but that was a title fight. You know what right. I mean? Right. I didn't understand it because you gained nothing from that. And it, yeah, of course, the money. But you're on a contract. The money yeah. still would have been there. Sorry, I'm not trying to kick you while you're down. No, 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 no. I'm, you're right. I'm really, I'm really not. We're just we're going to have an honest discussion. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I, I didn't like that. Uh, and I think just going forward, you just got to be more professional with it. As you say, in between camps with the weight and stuff like that, leading up to fights and just making more just making the correct choices. You know what I'm saying? Because I would love to see you fight on a full camp against Khalil. And we can't take away from Khalil's performance. He no, did tremendous. No, but but the purpose of a fight camp, you know, it's not only to get you in shape, it's to get you mentally ready as well, to get you dialed in, zoned in, locked in, fast, sharp, feeling hungry, knowing that you've done eight weeks of sacrifice. You haven't been out with your buddies. You haven't been drinking. You haven't been doing the things you want to do because it all comes down to this moment. So all that compounds to the best version of yourself on fight mm -hmm. night. And granted, that's what brings the pressure because it's just one night. And if you go out there, you fuck it up. You've done all that sacrifice for nothing. You know, but right. that is why you do that fight camp. Yeah, to get to peak a physical condition so you can push the pace for three rounds, five rounds, whatever it is. But mentally, you're, you're locked in and you're fucking your reflexes are on point, you know. Right. Um, and, no, if there isn't, and if there isn't that fucking goal there or the, the, the belt or the guarantee of a number one contender shot or whatever, then it doesn't really makes sense and that, that was my thoughts and i understand you rolling I knew the that, dice when i knew that going in like i don't know what's wrong with me like i just can't like i need to i've always been a super mentally strong person and i've been able to like just push through and grind and 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 everyone has their down moments but i've always been able to turn it around and, and even when i feel like i say this all the time i said this on here a bunch of times i don't really care how you feel like if you feel like shit or you feel like you can't do it or you can feel however you want, as long as your actions are positive, like you can feel like you're awful or feel like shit. As long as you're moving forward and putting one foot in front of the other and moving towards your goal, it doesn't really matter how you feel as long as you're making the right step. So I've always been able to do that, but I almost feel like maybe I need to, you know, we've talked about the mental health thing and, and I've done a good job of managing my mental health, but I think maybe I need to add in some sports psychology stuff because my ego can't allow me to make the right decision. My, my pride, like who I am as a man can't allow me 
to to uh, to to almost to to like even have any any small amount of self preservation, if that makes so, sense. So, like, so 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 I, I want to ask you about that, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're, fine. you're absolutely right. That's why fighters we need protecting from ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's why you need a manager that will say no, no, you're not taking that fight. Everybody you know, says no. <laughs> as fight as fighters, we say fuck it, yeah, let's go. I can do this. You know what I mean? And granted, some are a little more flippant in that regard than others, you know? But that's mm-hmm. why you need a team around you that, 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 okay, ultimately you're in control. It's your career. You can sign whatever contract you want. But but when there's like everyone around you, your team and your coach is all saying, no, 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 you'd have to be pretty pig-headed to still go ahead and do that. Um, Honestly, I should have called you and just... And just I'd have told you, it, fuck no, straight away. And just ran it by you instead of like... My my pride is such a it's such my my pride and my ego is such a positive thing when you're in the fight. Like I won't allow you to get over on me in this position. Be, not because I think you're going to beat me there, but because I just I, I, my my manhood won't allow it. But mm. it also has put me in some of the worst positions possible. Like I'm sitting in right now. Like I wasn't man enough to say no. It wasn't that my coaches said this is a terrible fucking idea. My manager was like, the answer to short notice fights is always no. Always. The answer is always no. Unless there's something, some, uh, you know, some caveat where it's a one number one contender spot or a title, like you said, or whatever, or they're giving you $10 million, like whatever. Like, but if you break it down by pros and cons, the answer is always no. So yeah, my wife was like, why, why do you, why? There's no reason to. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't give a response as no, like I'm, I'm too prideful to say, no, I don't want to do that. Or no, I can't do that. Or no, it's too short notice or no, I can't make the weight. Like I could have just said I was hurt. They wouldn't know any different because oh, I tweaked my knee in practice a week ago. They would have There's never nothing known. wrong with saying no, though. There's nothing that, wrong with saying I'm locked in. I'm focused on trying to become a world champion. I'm not getting any younger, right? And I don't want to roll the dice. And they would have right. said, "All right, f- fair enough." See, and, and I don't know why. I'm just so, I'm like so afraid of like someone thinking I'm a pussy. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, like, and, and I and like I felt good about the fight. Like, I, like it is, you know, like yeah, this is winnable, but. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And I did feel good going in. I really did. But I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> like I just, well, I, well, it's the same thing in the John Jones fight. Everyone always asks about, you know, did, were you considering, you know, not getting up after the knee or, or taking the DQ? No, that never even entered my mind because the question they asked me was, are you okay? I can't, even if I wasn't, I don't have it in me to say no. I can't. I can't bring myself to say those words. I can't say no. I can't do it. Like I, I just can't say it out. Even if I'm thinking it, I can't say it out loud. So no, I never even got to a position to think about a DQ or John or the knee or it was illegal or what. I didn't even get to that point. It wasn't even consideration because the first question was, "Are you okay to continue?" Like it wasn't about like there was nothing after that. Of course, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. Like even if I wasn't, I couldn't. I couldn't say it. So like, that's the exact same situation when the UFC called. Like, yeah, I'll, t- I'll do it. Yeah, I can do it. I can fight that guy. I'm no bitch. I'm not a pussy. What are you talking about? Mm. Hell yeah. Can you make the weight? Of course I can. I could have weighed two seventy. I would have said yeah. <laughs> like, and I would have tried. And that's the problem. And and, and, and the, I don't mean with problem. you. No, but I don't mean with you. I mean it's with guys like you and I. You know, and fighters or w- w- whatever. You, your your best strength is also your biggest weakness at the same time. You know yeah, what I mean? And I, 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 I still find that. I mean, there's a balancing act. I mean, my personality and who I am and all the rest of it has helped me greatly in life. You know, certainly post-fight career, I'm doing very well. But it also hurts me at the same time because I'm mm-hmm. often emotionally immature. I'm quick to say something. I'll do great at a press conference. I'll give sound bites. I'll give, be controversial. But it also hurts me in day to day because I say the wrong shit. 
Yeah, that hurts you at the gas station. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you know what I mean? And it's the same yeah. with being a fighter. You know, you've got to be more businesslike. You've got to be yeah. more strategic, you know, and you've got to let other people make the decisions. You know, that's, so, so, that's think, so funny you say that. Like, I've, I, I've said this a bunch of times to just friends and people that are around me. Like, the traits that I possess that have made me successful and gotten me this far in life also make me absolutely difficult to live with and to be yeah. around and to, to love. I'm hard to love. I'm hard oh. to like be like, I'm hard to be friends with. I'm hard to like, like it's real work. The people that are around me that have been around me for a long time are, are genuinely like gems of humans. <laughs> like, mm. because I'm difficult and I'm just hard to be a friend with. And like those things are, are, are starting to like bleed over. And now instead of helping me in my career so much, I think they're hurting me a little bit. And I just need to, it's going to step back and just reevaluate. And I got to, bring other people in i knew that you weren't gonna let, enjoy it probably like i knew that you mike well, mike is gonna think i'm an idiot but like instead of just like uh, texting and say hey i took this fight like i need to call and say hey, no 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 you this. text me and you said are you working the uh, event on whatever <laughs> yeah. it was i said no i'm not i'm flying to england and then that was that. You didn't say what you were doing. And then it was Harrington goes, he sent me a link on Twitter saying Anthony's fighting. I was like, oh shit. What right. the F? <laughs> well, and that's what maybe that's what I gotta do. I gotta, you know, maybe do a little bit of sports psychologist things and 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 bring in other people that are because listen, you're not afraid to tell me that's a fucking stupid choice, Anthony. What are you doing? That's stupid. Like you have no problem doing that, which is why I didn't call you probably. Yeah, but then no, there's, of course. Yeah. Then there's guys like my manager and my f close friends and my wife. Like they don't uh, possess the ability to stand up to me in those in those situations. And not that I bully them or that I'm mean or whatever, but I'm I'm. It, it, they're easy to convince. You're kind of yeah. overbearing a little bit, so I and, can. Say, and, and they'll probably know that all the reasoning and talking and pleading and whatever will be absolutely pointless. Mm -hmm. And then. The more they do that, it starts to create friction and then right. bad tempers flare. Oh, you don't think I can do it? it? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And the next minute, everyone's arguing. It's like, well, that's what he wants to do. All right, well, let's support him. I get right. that. You know, um, it's a it, it's a cruel sport, man. Mm -hmm. It's a cruel it sport. It is, you know, and, and having that confidence to step in there and fight and dedicate you, yourself to it is also what makes you do things like that, you know. So you just got to know, though, going forward, it's a tough sport. People, a lot of people have been saying to me, "Oh, you need to give him the Joe Rogan, Brendan Sharp talk." I'm like, right. "What are you talking about?" He took a fight on short notice. He rolled right. the dice. He dared to do something. It didn't pay off, you know. Uh, but there's lessons to be learned, yeah. and that's always the way. And it's always so cliche to say, but when you make mistakes, and that was a mistake, if you don't mm -hmm. mind me saying, yeah. you know, in hindsight, in hindsight, you didn't, you didn't, sure. you, you didn't know it was a mistake. Because you, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was an educated guess, and you thought, I say, educated guess, but you're like, I feel I can do this. Right. I, I believe I in myself. Yeah. I believe I can do this, and nobody knew until you went out there and did it. And it turns mm -hmm. out now, with hindsight, that that was a mistake. So, so what do you do? How do you learn from that? How do you make right. sure you don't make those same mistakes? How well, do you we make have sure conversations that you don't, like this and that just... you don't go into a fight unprepared? You know right. what I mean? Because these are the best fighters on planet Earth. Khalil Roundtree was stopping a lot of people in a row. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a very dangerous opponent. You have to respect everyone that steps in there and know that, hold on a minute, if I'm not on my A game, never mind top 10, top 15, entry-level UFC fighter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These are serious people that need to be respected, and you need to respect yourself as well at the same time and all the hard work that you've put in and your family and your team around you that have been with you every step of the way. Right. You know what I mean? That's the way mm -hmm. you got to try and look at it and be super professional. I think, right, when I'm in camp, I'm locked in. You say to the UFC, I need two, three months, whatever it is, to prepare for this physically and mentally. And I really mm -hmm. do feel the sports psychologist will really help because I, I worked with one a little bit. He was called Brian Kane. And mm -hmm. we didn't do too many sessions. But the mind controls everything. And I say that all the time, but it's the most important tool that you have. And for me, kind of my sports psychologist was Jason Perillo. He really helped me get my emotions in check and all the rest of it. But, but you know, it's got to be meticulous moving forward. Otherwise, you're doing a disservice to all the people around you. But more importantly, yourself. Because yeah. we all still believe in you. I know you have the ability, Anthony. But if you're going to half-ass it, then right. what's the what's point? What's the point? 
Yeah. What's the point if I'm not going to commit to, you know, making the right decision? It's not anytime I'm in camp, I bust my ass and I show up ready. But like, if I'm not going to make the other right decisions, then I'm wasting my time. And that's, I don't know. It's, it even feels different before, like even, even in the, the span fight before that, like, I don't know. I just feel different right before the fight. I don't know. Did that change for you as you got older? In what know. sense? What do you mean? Like, like less man, when I was younger, fearful of the moment. No, it's almost more like when I was, when I was younger, I could not give a fuck less. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have possibly cared less about what was going to happen in there. I was just hype and I was angry and I was ready to go. And now I like find myself struggling with my emotions a little bit before I walk out. Like, I don't know how I feel like I, am I, Am I am I supposed to be hyped up? Am I supposed to be calm? Like I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. It's the weirdest thing. I don't well, know. That's it's probably like a mixture of things because a you, you're getting older, you're maturing, mm -hmm. you're around the fight game more. I mean, you've had a lot of fights, you know, so you're yeah. used to that environment. When you first start, well, I, I always think, tell fighters. Well, I think we're at the fights a lot too, and I think that throws it off. Like everything at the apex is so familiar because we're there mm -hmm. so much. So you don't have that those butterflies when you're walking in because like if, like I see all my friends, I'm like dabbing up the security guys and like yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm home. So I don't have this unfamiliar feeling going on when I'm in there. And it's even the same on the road. Like I, everything, I think I'm just at so many fights that I'm just so familiar and so comfortable there. Then I get ready to fight and I don't know how I'm supposed to feel because I do feel very, very comfortable. But I know that I'm supposed to be like a little bit nervous or like, hyped up but i'm not so then i try to like recreate it or, or I try to force it it's i don't know that's where like the, i think the sports psychologist will come in and just help me figure out like how do we manage all these feelings and thoughts mm. you know yeah 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 all right well listen yeah. took a lot of bravery to come out and say all that anthony and i respect yeah. you for it i do man and listen you know you, it, it's a natural process you do you bury your head in the sand you go away you don't respond and all the rest of it but eventually you know you, you come crawling back out and you right. say, all right, it is what it is because we're embarrassed. First and yeah. foremost, let's be honest, as fighters, as men, right? Battle, combat is something historically that that's what men do or alpha males do, you know? Mm -hmm. And you go out there and you talk a good game and you fail, it's embarrassing. I've it been there. Many people have been there, but for what it's worth, all right, there hasn't been a few fights for a few weeks and I'm losing my mind. I'm having to watch regular <laughs> sports. I don't understand the rules. But uh, but my, it's almost every week. There's boxing and all the rest, and people, they, they do. It happens all mm -hmm. the time. And in the wash of traffic and news and all the rest of it, people have forgotten about it. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, for sure. It's, well, in, it's in, you. You're well, all that matters in you right. for you. Do you want to do it? Does your family want you to do it? Do you yeah. need to do it? If all those answers are yes and you want to do it, then fucking do it. If the answers are no, then, then then don't. And you just got to remember this. I mean, because this sounds really bad. To, well, not bad to say, but, you know, sometimes you got to take stock and look around at your life and think, shit, look how good I've got this. I mean, you said before, no high school diploma. You're standing mm -hmm. on there in the ESPN in a suit and you're a bloody good analyst, very well, one of the best up there. And I kind of did the same thing because life gets you down, right? And sometimes, you know, even, you know, like I've, I've got a great life. I can't complain. But sometimes I feel sorry for myself. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, I bloody feel, still feel like the victim of things or whatever. And I remember because I was just in England and we drove down to Heathrow Airport from Clitheroe. It's a long old drive, about four and a half hours. Doesn't sound long by California or American standards, <laughs> but in England, that's a long drive, especially when you're going on a long old flight. So we're driving down, we set off at midnight. We got to the airport about 4.30 in the morning and we stopped at a service station uh, on the freeway, on the motorway. And we walked in, I was starving. And all that was open was a McDonald's. That was the only thing there. And I don't eat McDonald's. I haven't had a McDonald's in ages. I went to Rebecca. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to get a cheeky McDonald's. She's like, oh, don't do it. I'm like, babe, I'm starving. We all ended up getting one. Anyway, point of the story is, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. We're in some shitty little service station in the middle of nowhere. And there's this Pakistani guy. He's working there behind the counter, right? It's dead. We were the only people there. Mm -hmm. He's got a smile on his face. Right, it's three o'clock in the morning. He was older than me. He's serving me McDonald's, 
and his attitude and his positivity. And and I, you know, and I was I was a like, happy new year and I was trying to talk to him all the rest. And I walked out, I says, look at that. Some uh, th th this guy, let's be honest. Does he want to be working in a McDonald's service station at three o'clock in the morning where there's no customers? Do you right. know what I mean? I'm sorry to anyone that does that. I'm not trying to sound insulting, but when you're a kid, you don't think that's where your life's going to be. But right. he still had a smile on his face. He was so pleasant to deal with. And it made me really take stock of myself and think, shit, look how lucky I am. Do you right. know what I mean? So you just got to listen. Bad shit happens. And in the grand well, scheme was, of things, it's not even that bad. And that, and that was the last thing that I was going to, before I get off the, my soapbox, I know, that, again, all these, all these, uh, <clears throat> it's going to sound like I've been sitting around, you know, people are going to love that I've been sitting around feeling sorry for myself with my head in, in the sand. But like, I haven't been, I've been really like, just in terms of like MMA and like being visible and, you know, in the public and social media and all that stuff, I've been kind of hiding out, but I, I was, uh, this would have been three days ago. I was standing in winter park, Colorado at the very top of the mountain at 14,000 feet skiing with my entire family. Uh -huh. And well, it, and, it must and I'm be not, nice. well, I'm not trying to brag. I don't want it to come off like I'm bragging, but I'm, I'm just trying to give myself from some perspective, kind of like your McDonald's story. Like, there was a guy that, that had recognized me and I was skiing with uh, a friend of mine and my family's there. And like I had my entire family and this huge trip to Colorado forever. And this guy recognized me. He's like, man, I was just, I feel so bad for you uh, about your last fight. And like, we're like just getting off the ski lift at, at a, like in front of a restaurant in, in skis, you only mm. a restaurant you could only ski to. And like that guy's feeling bad for me. Like I'm on literally on top of the world right now in the most beautiful place I've ever been. Like the, I, I, it is so arrogant of me to let him feel bad for me. Like I, I'm doing fine. Life is good. Yeah, I'm in a great yeah. place overall. My kids are healthy. My wife loves me most of the time. She's nice to me most a lot of the, of the time. time. Yeah, she's <laughs> nice to me a lot of the time. I'm 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 very fortunate in all parts of my life. Like I had one bad night. It fucking happens in this game. It is what it is. We move forward, we move on. But I'm 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 not gonna allow myself to feel sorry for myself. Harness the good energy, block the bad. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> and block the shots and block the uppercuts. Right, check yeah, the you kicks. watch out for them uppercuts. Hey, and, I did a pretty good job sure. checking kicks though. I did a pretty you good did. job checking you kicks did. though. <laughs> Uh, I expect there. him to throw more leg kicks. So, look, listen, right, we, we look forward to the comeback, okay? Right. Don't call it a comeback. You never went anywhere. It is what it is, man. It is what yeah. it is. Just uh, learn from this, and we get better. 100%. Well right. done. Well said, Therapy Anthony. Session, no, therapy I'm session serious. over. <laughs> Dr. Bisbee, I'm right. always here. My door is always open. and very competitive. Right?